church we get to stand and sing his praises this morning i invite you to stand along with us in your living room in your kitchen wherever you're at stand and sing with us um praise as you feel led whether you put your hands up you clap your hands together uh, stand sit whatever you feel led to do right now but let's sing Jesus' praises this morning he is alive he has conquered death he has washed away every sin and we get to sing his praises amen Children sing a song of liberation. The God of our salvation set us free. Death, where is thy sting? The curse of sin is broken. The empty tomb stands open. Come and see. He's love, 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 hallelujah. Love, praise and glory to the Lamb. He's love. Sing how for Christ the one and only, so powerful and rescued me. Death won't hurt me now because He has redeemed. overcome the grave with the people dance let the people sing worthy is the mighty king worthy is the lamb worthy of a praise worthy is the one who has overcome the grave with the people dance let the people sing worthy is the mighty king
Amen, church. And let's keep singing because death is arrested. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. Orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to death. When death was arrested, and my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over. your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now life begins with you. Released from my chains I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom of my debt and he called me his friend when death was arrested in my life he gave oh your grace so free washes over me you have made me new now life begins with you It's your end, this love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced. Though heaven had lost But then Jesus arose With our freedom in hand That's when death was arrested And my life began Oh, your grace so free Washes over have made me new now life begins with you it's your endless love pouring down on us you have made us new now life begins with you oh we're free Forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever, amen. When death was arrested and my life began, oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever.
Amen. And let's continue singing together, church, one more song to bring us into our prayer time this morning, continuing to celebrate the life that we have through Jesus Christ. He suffered, bled, and died on the cross, descended into hell, and came to life again on the third day for our sake because he loves us that much. He is our living hope. He is the one who's going to get us through this pandemic. He is the one that we worship and we celebrate and we praise no matter what. Through every high and low, he is always worthy of our praise. Let's continue singing this morning to our Savior, Jesus Christ, our living hope.
said, amen and amen. Good morning and happy Easter, church. Let's come to a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we think about Easter and the resurrection of our Lord, Lord, I'm getting goosebumps. The fact that Jesus sacrificed his life for us and on that third day he rose again to show us that even death has no hold over us. That if we accept Jesus, Lord, we don't have to worry about that. That he tells us we will be granted eternal life with you. And that Father, by, by dying on that cross, he bridged that gap so we're able to have that conversation with you, that we're able to be with you. And you promise, Lord, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Lord, it's such an amazing feeling and an amazing gift that you've given us. To know that you're on our side. To know that no matter what the earth throws at us, to know that no matter what this world throws at us, Father, that we have you to lean on, to hold on to. Jesus made that possible. And there's nothing, Father, that we can face in this world that Jesus hadn't already faced. The trials that he faced, the beatings, and even death, Lord. And Jesus was victorious. Jesus is victorious. So Father, I pray that as we spend time with our families today, that we take some time to reflect upon this story. We take some time to reflect upon the gift that Jesus has given to us. That Father, if there's anything that's holding us back, Lord, that we lay it at the cross and walk away from it. Knowing that Jesus and paid that price for us. Father, I pray that we reach out to our friends, that we take the time to, to talk to them about this. The Easter story is such an awesome, awesome way to reach people for you. To show them that we love them, and that God loves them, and Jesus loves them, and paid that price for them as well. Father, I raise up all the families who are affected by this COVID-19. Those who may have loved ones in the hospital they can't see. That, Father, you put your hand of comfort upon them at this Easter time. And that, Father, you just, you heal those people. For those who are home by themselves, who might not have people surrounding them right now, Father. Lord, I pray for them as well. That you put your hand of comfort on them. And that they join in this celebration of your son. Father, I pray that you protect the first responders and all those people that are essential workers who are going to work every day your hand over them and lift them up. Allow them to see the joy that you bring and to remember that as they spend time with their families on this Easter. Father, we will get through this. I know that. Because I know that you have us in your hands. that we can rely fully on you. So Father, hold us. Comfort us. Heal our lands. Bless us, Father. In this celebration of Jesus, we thank you and we praise you with all our hearts. 
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. It's Pastor Kathy. Wanted to touch base with you and kind of use this as our connect card time. So as leadership at CV Free Church, we really want you to know that we're working hard to be the church in this time of change and reaching into our community with the same love and compassion that we've always shown. So we want to really focus on staying connected. So we want to take this time to encourage you to explore and make yourself comfortable with our website, cvfree.church. And there are many ways you can stay connected with your church family through the website. You can use it as a virtual connect card where you can share prayers, answered praises, send messages to leadership, and you can even tithe with our online giving there. And also we want to talk about if you're not comfortable with the website and you would still like to, to tithe, we are checking the mailbox regularly. And so if you want to send your tithe or any other information, just know that we will receive it. And so we want to talk about sharing the church and we want to talk about cvfree.church and how it could be a tool full of resources for you to share with your friends and family. Sharing the website and today's live stream are both ways that you can invite your friends and family to join to share that new thing that God is doing in our community. And I want to continue to mention the Gospel of Mark study. You can join us on the Facebook page for that. If you haven't been there yet and you don't know anything about it, let somebody know on the Facebook page and we can invite you. That is a small private group where we can invite you. And it's a study we're doing to go through and finish the Gospel of Mark with Francis Chan from Right Now Media. We're looking forward to having you join us each week as we come together as CV Free Church here on Facebook, on our website, or you can contact us for the Google Meet info. We pray that we will see you soon. God bless. Good morning. Hello, everybody, and happy Easter. Um, so I'm so excited to be here with you today. And I just wanted to share a little Easter poem. So it's for each letter of Easter, the word Easter. I did not write it, but I wasn't able to find the author. So E is for each of us. God loves everyone. A is for a broken world, so he sent his son. S is for our sin that Jesus took away. T is for the tomb where he lay for three whole days. E is for the empty tomb, the stone was rolled away. R is for the risen Lord, Jesus is alive today, hallelujah. So I'm really excited about our treasure hunt that we just did. And so I'm ready to unpack some of these items that we I, I hope you had lots of fun finding. Um, so let's just dive right in. The first one is a palm leaf or any green leaf because it may be hard to find a palm leaf this time of year. So I did find this, which is a cross made out of palm, little like a whole bunch of palm leaves, but also just a regular green leaf like everybody else probably has in case you weren't able to find that. And that item was to remind us of Palm Sunday. We celebrate last Sunday when Jesus rode into town on a donkey and everyone was so excited that they were laying palm branches all over the street to for him to walk over with the donkey and everybody was so happy to see him. The next item is perfume. So I have a bottle of perfume right here and um, that was we read in John 12 2 through 8 when Jesus's friend Mary was overwhelmed with such gratitude for Jesus coming to, to be our savior that she broke open a whole bottle of perfume, which would equate to a year's worth of money. So a whole year's worth. Um, and she used it to anoint him and to, she washed her hair or washed his feet with her hair. And um, she was just so overwhelmed with thanks. Um, the next item is a piece of bread, which I have. And if you joined us last night for our communion service, we really talked about that, but it's really about how we read how Jesus broke the bread. And now we do communion in honor and re to remember him for that. Um, so then the next item was silver coins. Let me get all my silver coins up here. And so here are the silver coins. And um, that is just to remind us that we read in Matthew 26, um, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And if you've been following along with our Easter upside down service, Pastor Jen has really shared a lot about Judas's story. Um, and then the next item is two sticks. So that represents the cross. 
that they made Jesus carry up himself to the top of the hill and where he was crucified. Which brings me to the next item, which are nails. I hope you can see those. Um, and the nails were what held Jesus up on the cross. And the next item is vinegar. And that is, I'm sure I had you guys wondering, uh, but we read in Mark 15, 36, how when Jesus was on the cross, they soaked a sponge in vinegar to give him to drink, which just fulfilled the prophecy. And you can read more about that in Mark if you'd like. Um, and then the next item was spices, which I have some spices. And that we read in John 1940, how they, after Jesus had passed away, they prepared his body for burial and they rubbed spices on his body and wrapped him in a cloth. And <clears throat> the next item is a rock. So here's my rock. And that is the tomb. They put Jesus in the tomb after he passed away and they put a big rock over the opening. And that was to make sure that nobody went in there and took Jesus or anything like that. And they had soldiers outside um, guarding it. And then three days later, praise God, we're here today on Easter Sunday. And then the stone was rolled away by a heavenly force and Jesus had risen. And then the last piece of our item that I asked for you guys to help search for was a piece of cloth. And that's because when we say that the tomb was empty, there actually was the cloth that Jesus' body was wrapped in, <clears throat> just lying there folded neatly because Jesus had risen. Hallelujah. So that are those are all the items that we gather together. I hope you had lots of fun. I had lots of fun finding them with my family. And I hope you have a blessed Easter. Bye. Hey, good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Here we are. This is such an exciting day for us. I pray that you can feel the excitement of the day, even though this is not at all what we're accustomed to. I think back to Easter's in the past when we have gathered at church and it's a full house and boy, we're just rocking it out. I hope during our worship time, you were rocking out in your living room and uh, I pray that God just continues to bless us in this time that I know we're sharing together. I miss you. I want you to know my heart is grieving this Easter for the fact that we're not able to be together. Every single one of you, I, I just wish we could be doing this in person 
but we're going to make the best of what we got because that's what we do when we follow the Lord and remember his goodness and apply it. So here we are, Easter Sunday. Let's talk about the fact right off the bat that we are in a world full of change, right? Just as that video you just saw mentioned, in a world full of change, today we worship the God who is never changing, never changing. And we thank ignitermedia.com for sharing that cool video with us and that awesome, powerful quote, because the unchanging nature of God is such a reassurance for us, especially in this wacky time. God's goal is still the same. Actually, right after Judas left the Last Supper meal and betrayed Jesus, he remained with his disciples and reminded them of his coming death and additional betrayals from them, especially Peter. Remember, we talked about that a bit on Good Friday. So right after those moments, Judas had gotten up, left the room uh, to do what he was going to do, and Jesus knew it. And Jesus was speaking to the other disciples about their eventual betrayal. These are the words he said after that. From John 14, 1 through 6, Jesus, the way to the Father, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is no more, there is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas spoke up and he said, no, no, we don't know, Lord. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. That's a really powerful scripture. And that has not changed. That message has not changed. The mission of Jesus has not changed. For the Son of Man, Jesus, came to seek and save those who are lost. That has not changed. That promise is still true. That mission is still true today. Those who recognize the power of Jesus alone to save the lost, to offer a lifelong lasting solution to our searching, those are the people who will truly be able to find peace. The good news is that when we find it, all we want to do is tell you about it, tell others about it. We just want to share because we see life in a new way. And that new way feels like coming home, like real home. I know home isn't necessarily a good place for everybody. And I'm sorry for that, especially in this time. And I pray for those who are in bad home situations right now with the pressures on. People are stressed. Church, when you let Jesus into your lives, you will be able to find a peace that is what coming home is supposed to feel like. And it can change your literal home. It can change the dynamic of everything that's going on in that place with those people if you give Jesus a chance. Remember what happened on this date about 2,000 years ago. It's monumental and truly asserts the fact that as that little cross says, nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. So even in the midst of social distancing, we should not be savior distancing. Let's draw closer to Jesus. If you want to welcome Jesus into your life as savior, I want you to know that even though there's a, a bit of awkwardness here because we're online, we can't do this in person. Hey, I want to be clear that if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your savior, if you haven't yet understood that he died on that cross and then rose again for you and for me. And that really starts to sink, sink in to your mind and heart this morning. Hey, let us know that in the comment thread, um, through a private message, through a phone call, through an email, cbfree.church. As Pastor Kathy pointed out, you can reach out to us. Pastor Jim mentioned the prayer wall. Gosh, we want to be able to come alongside you so passionately and, and help you on this journey that is the most important decision you will ever make in your whole life, and that is to let Jesus in. 
So please let us know if you make that decision today or if you're recommitting today to following Jesus Christ because we want to be able to resource you even from afar and help you to continue to grow in this most important decision you will ever make. This is a decision that will turn an upside down life right side up again because as skit guys have pointed out in one of their videos, when it, the good news of Jesus, settles in our hearts, it changes our minds. Then the past is turned upside down. We're put right side up again when we lean on Jesus. Speaking of the past, let's go back to that day so many years ago and explore what happened that first Easter Sunday morning. Luke 24, 1 through 12 recounts the scene for us. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has what? Risen. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise? And they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter, Peter, can you imagine? Can you imagine being Peter? Hearing this news, Peter, who, as we explored, if you were with us on Good Friday, and you can always go back, by the way, and check out that message, Peter had betrayed Jesus, which he said he would never, ever do. Can you imagine the excitement, the, the just confusion, all the emotions that Peter would have been feeling to hear that Jesus was not in the tomb? And so he rose and he ran to the tomb. He, he didn't walk. He ran to the tomb stooping and looking in, because remember, it, it would have been a tomb like a, a cave. So he stooped down, looked in, and he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. While all four Gospels record that glorious morning when everything that had been turned upside down got put right side up again because of the resurrection, Luke's Gospel account has a special detail for us to really connect with today. Don't miss it. It's this idea about Peter that in verse 12, he went home marveling about what he had seen or not seen, right? Because Jesus was not there. Peter would never forget what he saw on that morning at the empty tomb. He went home marveling. The Greek word for that is thou madzo, and it means to wonder, to be in awe over and think deeply about something that has just occurred, or to try to ruminate on it with awe, trying to justify what had been seen, to make sense of it somehow. Peter, like Jesus and like most Jews of that time, had traveled to Jerusalem all their lives to celebrate the feast of Passover. Peter likely had a keen sense of the hills and valleys around Jerusalem. This was a great city that had been a part of his life and all the Jews' lives for as long as they could remember. But once those memorable moments happened with Jesus in those places— like the temple, the upper room, the Garden of Gethsemane, the Via Doloroso, and Golgotha. It's reasonable to believe that Peter could not unsee what he had saw and experienced in those particular places with Jesus. And he marveled. He continued to be in awe and think deeply about what had just occurred, what he had seen. He continued ruminating on those events and conversations and moments with Jesus as he tried to make sense of what it all meant that he was now no longer in the tomb. 
You know, even though Jesus had been telling his followers that he was going to suffer and die and then rise again while he walked and lived with them, right up until Good Friday, he told them these things would happen. Nobody expected the empty tomb to happen and the resurrection to take place at that moment. Otherwise, why would the women have gone to finish the burial protocols? They had those spices with them because the burial on Friday was so rushed. They had Sabbath to observe on Saturday, starting sundown Friday, right? So they didn't have time to really give Jesus the attention that he deserved in his death. So they were going back Sunday morning fully prepared to finish the burial preparations. That's why they had those spices with them. They would not have done that if they were expecting him to be gone, if they were expecting the resurrection to happen then and there. They were shocked by what they did not see that they had expected to find there, the body of Jesus. Everybody, including the disciples and Jesus' other followers, thought the dead Jesus, who was placed in the tomb on Good Friday, would still be dead on Sunday. Absolutely they did. When the women came back from the empty tomb, after hearing what the angel had sent to them and tried to relay this good news to the rest of the disciples, they were dismissed as being overly dramatic, emotional, perhaps suffering from PTSD. I mean, I don't use that lightly. If, if you were there, if we were there watching what had happened to Jesus, it, it was watching someone being beaten to death right before their eyes. Now, we know Jesus actually died on the cross, but I mean, the details of what happened to him being flogged with a whip that had glass and bone shards in it. I, we can only imagine how painful that must have been. And they saw all of that. So absolutely it traumatized them. But unfortunately, the apostles dismissed this good news because they thought, there's no way. These women are just crazy. They're overcome with emotion. Verse 10, now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But as we were just saying, these words seemed to them an idle tale, not one to be taken seriously. And they did not believe them. Again, nobody was expecting Jesus to get up from the death mat in resurrection victory on Easter Sunday. All the disciples and followers who were together at that time thought their world still was turned upside down from the horrid crucifixion on Friday. Even though Jesus had been telling them repeatedly what was going to happen, the coming resurrection after suffering and death, they were still stuck. N.T. Wright um, explains that they were puzzled. And understandably so, resurrection in that world was what God would do in the end for all the righteous dead, giving new embodiment to everyone from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob down to the most reach, recent righteous martyrs who had died for the cause of the faith. The resurrection itself would be a large scale event after Israel's great and final suffering then all God's people would be given new life, new bodies. See, that's what they were waiting for. They were not expecting the resurrection of the Messiah now. Interesting insight. This was what they thought as first century Jews. Thus, it should not surprise us to see how they responded to the women who returned from the empty tomb. But something triggered inside of Peter. When he heard the update from the women, he had to make his way to the tomb to see for himself. What he witnessed caused him to marvel. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves and he went home, marveling at what had happened. Thou madzo. He kept turning over in his mind what he had experienced in those moments while trying to make sense of what it all meant as he played it repeatedly in his head and perhaps passed by those significant places where Jesus had predicted this outcome. 
It is likely the dark picture in that upside down frame slowly gained light as it was turned right side up with understanding, clarity, and perspective. It was all beginning to make sense. Sometimes it takes a little while for us to make heads or tails of events that happen in our lives that just turn us upside down, right? Why? Why, God, would you have allowed that to happen? Why are we dealing with COVID-19 right now? Right? Why are we not able to worship together? Lord, if you were so powerful, why didn't you make this go away so that we could be back together on Easter Sunday? I know there are pastors all around the world who, who are really, really struggling right now. I've had my moments of sadness over this, but I will not stay there. And I pray my colleagues don't either, because that's not what God wants for us on this Resurrection Sunday. If we can't gather safely in a building, well, then we will gather safely online and we will worship the Lord Jesus Christ from our living rooms and our dining room tables and our bedrooms and wherever we are right now. Because that is what we're told to do. Because the mission has not changed. We will learn from this. We will grow from this. Because that's who we are, church. We will apply the faith we say we have. We will not deny it. Absolutely, I pray that is true. Sometimes those moments happen, those moments of despair happen in significant places that mark us with difficulty, defeat, and despair. But God has a way of meeting us in those moments and walking us out of the valley of the shadow of death. You know, that scripture tells us, Psalm 23, we don't stay in the valley of the shadow of death. We come through the valley and get out on the other side. A dear friend of mine, Jim Willard, Impact Project, he loves talking to me about that quote, that we walk through the valley with our friends who are hurting, with, with people in our community who need this support. Let's walk it through with them. That's the mission that Jesus models. Absolutely. With new hope and new beginnings around the corner, waiting for us to experience them. Now, we have to go through that period of mourning oftentimes, but let's understand that there is a light at the other end. There is a mountaintop where we're going to be able to turn around and look back at that valley and say, that was the past, and that turned me upside down. But now, I've come out on the other side, and I am right back up again, ready to go. In order to experience resurrection, a death has to occur first, right? In order for us to truly have new life, we have to die unto ourselves first. We have to live for Jesus and die unto our own selfish desires and goals. We have to let him guide. Wow, is that hard, isn't it? Especially for strong men who are leaders, and women too, but guys, I've talked to so many of you. I've seen it play out. You just have such a struggle sometimes giving it up to the Lord, understanding that you don't have to carry the burden of everything on your own shoulders, that you've got Jesus Christ as your partner in this. He will help you shoulder the load. You do not have to do it all yourself. He is the Savior, not you, not me. Not any one person. Boy, the role we play in the mission is so vital. Let's not underestimate that. But we are not doing it on our own if we're doing it successfully. We've got Jesus on our side. Remember, the mission of Jesus has not changed. For the Son of Man, Jesus, came to seek and save those who are lost. That's what he does. So what are we going to do? Are we going to deny or apply the good news of this resurrection encounter? Initially, even the disciples were idle upon hearing the news of Jesus' resurrection. What about us? Will our lives remain changed for a few weeks from now because of what we are experiencing this Easter weekend? I mean, Easter 2020 is going to be memorable, all right. COVID-19 has made sure of that. But I'd like to offer that we would take what the enemy intended for evil 
and allow God to use it for good. Can we do that? Can we do that together as individuals, but also as family units, as friends, as a church, as a community? Can we make this time one that is memorable because of the blessings and the positive things that came out of this? That's my prayer. That's my prayer for this time. Perhaps this is the year, the month, the day, the moment that your upside down life is turned right side up again forever because you grasp the news. After all, when it, the good news of Jesus Christ settles in our hearts, it changes our minds. Give Jesus a chance. I know it doesn't make sense. It's not about making sense. Following Jesus is like knowing that you're able to survive because you're breathing air. It's just there. It just happens. That's faith when you truly get it. It just happens. You just believe because you see the physical evidence in the history. You you find that if that's what you need, it's there. Science can support you and your walk with Jesus if you're that type of believer and you need those details and you need that proof. But there's also proof in the change that happens in people's hearts and minds when they let Jesus in. And that's a proof that we can sometimes tangibly see, but other times it's a feeling, a thought process that changes. May we be open to that. You know, Peter never got over the wonder of the resurrection. Actually, he and the other disciples were given the opportunity to apply their wonder, their re-rooted faith in the days that followed. Over the following 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, he appeared to over 500 people. That's documented in 1 Corinthians 15, 6 and other non-Christian historical sources, by the way. Okay, so over 500 people saw this man who died on a cross, and it's proven he died on that cross, alive. That's awesome. (laughs) That's awesome. Including the remaining 11 disciples who had shared the Last Supper with him. So somewhere between 20 and 35 days after the first Easter Sunday morning, Jesus met on the side of a mountain in Galilee and gave those present a plan for God's blessing of life that was to be life turned right side up again through salvation, through the forgiveness of sin, because of what Jesus did. Everybody everywhere, everybody everywhere, now had the opportunity to become disciples or followers of Jesus. What an incredible plan that would take the existing disciples to spread this good news. This was their new job spread the good news, and make more disciples all over the world. God created this world, and he wants every single one of his children everywhere to have the opportunity to know him personally through Jesus Christ. This plan, known today as the Great Commission, was what Jesus was counting on his followers to do, to apply, not deny, their faith after Jesus would leave them and go back to heaven. The Great Commission plan is recorded in Matthew 28. Here we go. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, this is verses 16 through 20, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, many of you know this, right? I bet shout it out from your living room. Go therefore and do what? Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Can't wait until we can baptize again, by the way. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. That's the promise. That's the mission. The Great Commission was about taking the good news of Jesus Christ all over this planet to everyone. God loves us all the same, and his message and mission are consistently present in his followers that we are to do this. We are to share This is how people will come out on the other side 
for real. Gosh, if you've really got the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, there is nothing you can't overcome. If you don't, it's likely you will falter because you're trying to do it all yourself. It goes back to that point I was making a few moments ago. We can't do it all ourselves. We're not sufficient to do that all ourselves because we are imperfect. We are going to mess up. We need Jesus to help us fine tune those mess ups so that they don't continue to happen over and over again. The good news of God always was intended for all people. In Genesis, we read about that promise. It is a crazy sounding upside down plan that only a right side up God could dream up and fulfill. The only thing left to do is for all disciples of Jesus to tell all people, all families of the earth, all nations, that the God who created them has a blessing of life just waiting to be received and experienced. And you know what just occurred to me? We could have people watching from all over the world hearing this message, whether they're hearing it from CV Free Church or they're hearing it from another Bible-believing preaching church, it doesn't matter. Let's just get the news out. Jesus Christ is alive. Absolutely. What are we waiting for, right? It's time to go and share the good news of God's blessings to everybody everywhere. We don't worship the grave. We don't stay in the grave. Boy, if you're a person right now battling depression, God wants to pull you out of that grave. And whether you know it or not, Reflect on where you're at right now in your mindset. Are you living a perspective that is optimistic and hope-filled and able to see the goodness of the Lord in your life? If you're not, I want to encourage you this morning that he has a different plan. He doesn't want you staying in that grave you're in right now. No way. Our rest, our hope rests in a living Savior who arose from the grave. May this reality be something we continue to marvel at as we worship Jesus this Easter, that we would not let this marvelous occasion lose its meaning over time, that we would seek Jesus with everything we've got. I challenged you last week, give him a year, give him a year and really go all in during that year. I promise you, he will change your life. And what you think is good now is going to become fantastically great. Now, there will be challenges because remember, we've got to go through the valley to get up on the other side. But we will get up on the other side. We will come out and we will look back and we will be able to make sense of how God could use tragedies and, and challenges for his glory, for his good, and to save other people's lives, literally, through our stories, if we would just share them and remember that he is risen. He is risen indeed. And this is what he wants for you and for me and for every single one of his children. The Lord wants to be able to restore us to him today and every day. So please let us know. Let us know in that comment thread if you want to welcome Jesus Christ into your life today. If you want to take this year challenge. We've got some pretty fantastic people at CB Free Church who love discipling and journeying with you. We've got some fantastic growth groups. They're still continuing to meet oftentimes through chats and Zoom calls. You're doing a great job, church, of staying connected. And if I'm saying this and you're a person who is not feeling connected right now, we want you to be connected. Message us right now and say, I need a connection. Help me. We'll help make it happen. You know, we've got people who call in and listen because they don't have internet access. We're able to give you a means to dial into your phone so that you can hear this service on a Sunday morning. We will meet you where you're at. Because that's the mission that has not changed, that Jesus Christ has come to save the lost. That's what we're doing. I pray. 
And so now Pastor John is going to wrap up our time together on this glorious Resurrection Sunday. I pray blessings upon you and your family. Can't wait until we get to see each other again in person. Be blessed. I'll see you next week. Morning, church. Hallelujah. The grave is empty. Today is a day that we just get to celebrate the work that Jesus did and the work that he's doing in each one of us. As Pastor Jen was just talking about, we have this opportunity that, that has been extended to us in, in the form of Jesus, but we have to make a decision to follow him. For some of us, that may be today we decide for the first time that Jesus is really for us. And if that's your case, I want to encourage you. I want to uh, just ask that you would keep in touch with us. Let us help you along your journey as you make these new steps to follow Jesus. It is the best decision you'll ever make in your life. And for some of us, this is like, we're like the disciples where Jesus is just calling us to follow him into something new. And I love the, the stories about the disciples, how they drop their stuff and follow him. Maybe God's putting something on your heart and you feel he's telling you to follow him. If that's your case, I just want to pray that you would have the boldness that those disciples did, that you would be willing to leave your stuff behind and try this new thing that Jesus is doing with you. Guys, as we celebrate today, I just want to bow our heads and take a moment to pray with you, just to celebrate this awesome thing that happened. But I also want to remind you that we do have uh, the opportunity to give online, cvfree.church slash giving. Um, if you're wrapping up and you want to take care of that, please feel free to use that method. Um, guys, let me pray for us. Father God, we just want to celebrate what an awesome thing it is. The fact that the grave is empty, that that somebody came looking for Jesus in that tomb and he says, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? That is just such a profound statement, and we just want to glorify you and celebrate that fact that, that in that statement lies the salvation for each and every one of you, Father, and we just want to say thank you for that. What a blessing it is to be able to be washed in your blood, to be cleansed, to be forgiven, to be made as white as snow. Father God, it is amazing, and it's almost uncomprehensible for most of us the the fact that you took the punishment for us and, and wore our stripes up on that cross so that we could be made new, so that we could be redeemed, so we could be restored in relationship with God. And Father, I just pray today that you would set our eyes on that simple fact, that we would just understand that what Jesus did, he did to bridge the biggest chasm that ever existed, that he pulled us an unworthy, unrighteous, filthy people into perfect alignment with a righteous God who can't be in the presence of sin, that Jesus created this gateway that allows us to bridge that gap and become whole again. Father, we celebrate and rejoice the empty tomb. We shout hallelujah. And Father, we just ask that you would bless us. Remind us of this each and every day. Let us go forth in our weeks, Father, and just have this upbeat step about us because of what you did. Father, we ask that you bless our week, that you continue to bless us, keep us safe, keep your hand of healing upon your people, Father. We just continue to raise prayers up. We see things happening in our communities that are reasons for praise, but Father, we also see junk out there that isn't of your will. And so, Father, we just continue to ask people, prayer warriors, hit your knees, rally around a cause, and keep praying father we know that everything happens for your will and that you will use everything for your glory so god we just ask that you would be glorified in whatever happens here father we ask this all in jesus precious name amen church have an awesome week god bless well, hey, CB Free, we wanted to close out our time today with one more song. Uh, we know usually after Pastor John prays and closes us out, uh, we go to a nice mellow buffer time to contemplate and reflect. But it's Easter, and what better reason to sing one more song than the fact that Jesus is alive and we have life through him. So let's sing together.
Church, it seems rather poetic, but I think it's no coincidence that we get to celebrate Easter. We get to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. 
the middle of a pandemic, when we're locked in our homes, some of us fear this looming pandemic over us. Some of us might fear death, but church, we have life through Jesus Christ. And church, because he walked out of the grave, we get to do the same. At the end of this, we are going to walk out of our homes. We're going to walk out of this lockdown. And we are going to praise his name like never before. We get to do that even today, right now. We get to hold on to that promise. Lord Jesus, if you walked out of that grave, I'm walking too. Church, be blessed.